Hi guys, let's get today's live stream started. We'll be painting Batman today. One of my favorite thing to paint. Today we'll be painting the Jim Lee style Hush Batman for the McLaren McFlaren figure, which is this one. And the uh, Jim Lee design, um, this is the version 2.5. It has a lot more expression around the forehead, the eyebrow area. This is for the Nicholas version that we designed for another figure. Let me see if I have it. Oh, I do. This figure. This is what I look like. I still need to match this dark gray color. I haven't done so. Whenever I get a chance, I will. Or maybe I just leave it all black. I don't know. Let me put the head on real quick. This is the figure with the custom Jim Lee head. Oh, I believe this is what maybe the All Star version, the one with the um, with the Robin. But the one we'll be painting today is one with Nick, big fat Nick. Compared to the original head that came with this figure, it's really, really tiny. Very, very tiny head. Well, we all know that that's a Jim Lee Hush Design logo. Batman logo. And this is the head I come with. Um, maybe it's Jim Lee? Maybe? Or maybe it was based on another design, but this is our design. We made the head slightly larger to match that broad shoulder. Just give you guys an idea what it looked like on the figure. This is it. Looking up, down, left, right. I just want him to stand next to our Superman, the Jim Lee Superman that we made the other day, the other week actually. Okay. Aside from that one, we also have the classic Batman. This is for the McFarlane Nightfall Batman. This one's really cool. One of our customers, I believe his name is Q, Q U, and he recommended me to get this Batman from McFarland. It's called the Speeding Bullet. It's really neat. I actually like it. Um, at first, I was was I was being held back on getting it because it looks a little weird. It has a Superman design kind of chest logo, and. The boots is kind of funny, but the more I look at it, the more I thought he's actually really cool. He has a really nice cape, and I like the blue. The body, I can, it's already dark. It has these lines designed on the side of the arm and legs, which is okay. Well, I guess this is how it was designed in the comic. I never read that comic, so I have no idea, but... The original head I came with was really cool too. This is the original head. Like a mask, mask head, covered the mouth area like a ninja. It's really neat. And I like that, I really like that blue. It's really cool and the head is slightly smaller 
um, I decided to use one of our newest classic Batman hair on it and we'll see how I look I don't know just for fun I like options and of course our classic Batman from Mezco that I had it for a while and this is what the figure looked like uh, thanks to my friend Anthony McNeil he got this figure for me both black and blue and I'll I'll be honest um, uh, I don't I don't know what to say when I saw this figure when I opened the box and I'm not even I don't know you, you guys tell me I think it, does it look pretty cool to you it looked like a modern day Mego maybe I don't know maybe they designed it like this on purpose but whoever approved it uh, it, I, I don't know Maybe some people like it, right? It's supposed to be classic, and maybe that's how the classic Batman look, you know? I went back and did some research on it, and I'll be honest, it doesn't quite look like that. But hey, maybe some people like it, you know? So I decided to put one of our newest classic hit on it. I, I thought, I'm not going to say it looked good, but I, I do like it a little bit better than that, that big chubby head, you know? It's nice. I think the head is pretty cool, but it's, it's slightly too big, in my opinion. And Misco tend to have this wide shoulder, short leg type of thing. Um, they're cute. They're cute. Cute. But I, I'm not aiming for a cute Batman in my collection, so... This is what we're having right now. Okay. Let's paint Batman. Yeah, my finger's dirty because uh, I was painting the other day. Don't mind that. Let's get started. Now, uh, we already did a skin tone <clears throat> primer, which is this one, the ammo, Power by Ammo by Meg Jimenez, Titan Hobby, okay? This is the flesh primer. I did a two layer of spray on it. Should be more than enough. Make sure when you spray it, uh, you spray evenly, be patient. One layer, weigh a little bit, second layer, weigh a little bit, and third layer. And make sure you always cover the bottom too. Because sometimes when I notice people just spray like this, like this, and then, oh, got dog fur, hi, I got furry dog. Um, spray like this, and then they, and then maybe one time back, and they think it's done. But then when they start painting it, they notice there's a lot of part on the bottom, inside the nose, that was not covered. So make sure you paint it all the way through, okay? Let me adjust my light so everyone can see it better. Okay, now I have gotten a lot of uh, message, private message asking me that, can you do a Batman? Can you do a Batman? I said, yeah, but I have done Batman many, many times, you know? So what are you looking for exactly? And most people say, well, um, I don't know how to paint around the edges of the mask. How do you do that? Okay, and another thing is the eyes. It's always the eyes, right? And I always tell people that uh, wear your magnified glasses, okay? And uh, I'll be honest, where is my magnified glasses? Oh, here it is. Oh, I do have it today. Good. Okay, wear your magnified glasses when you want to paint certain detail area. But today, I really want to emphasize on the edges of the mask. How do you get like a perfect line? Okay, to me, nothing's perfect, but if we can get close to it, that's great. Well, first thing we're going to do is, let's get rid of the annoying part first, the eyes. Uh, eyes are white, right? Let's get the white color ready. I have my friend Ashken watching. I don't even know why he's watching. He's the one who taught me most of these paints tip. He's an awesome guy. He lives in NorCal, California. And he paints really well. Art major. He does this for a living. Okay, so first, small drop of water inside my white paint. I use Vallejo on this. This is the paint I use. Just regular white, not gloss, not matte, just regular white. Okay, one drop, let's do another drop, two drop. I want the paint to be very, very watery. You know, Ashkin taught me a really cool tips on painting eyes because often when we paint white color on any type of color paint, it take a while to really get the white on it. 
Uh, what he suggests is you can paint gray on it first, and then the white will show much easier after. But today, you know, due to time, we're just going to draw, paint the white eyes with the white to begin with. Okay, doesn't matter if it come off or not. The paint is very, very watery. This is only the first layer. I just want the white eyes to be in there for for a bit until it's fully dry. So later on when we paint the black, once it's, it's fully done, the eyes is ready to go too. That's my goal. That's why I'm painting the white first. I hope everyone's having a good night today. Good day so far and a great Halloween. This is the first year that we completely skip Halloween for, for, with our kids. I don't know about Halloween anymore. I feel like she's always dressing up every single day. She has like, I don't know, seven, eight different costume from anime costume to princess to Gwen Stacy. She has, he, she has like two Gwen Stacy costume and she's wearing it every single day running around the house with it. I hope you guys had a great Halloween and trick or treat too. For us, we just thought that, kind of want to take a break on all the sugars, all the candy. Last year we got tons of candy. I end up, I'll be honest, I end up giving most of them away and end up throwing most of them away. Dentists can be very expensive, you know? And my daughter, she, don't quite like to brush her teeth. So, no brushing teeth, no candy then. Okay, so we got the eyes. Looks funny right now. It's all white. I think that that was what? Two layer, three layer maybe? Okay. Just want to keep it white and wait until it dry. Now let's get to the black. We're going to do the black since the figure is based on black color. I have another one coming, same exact one. Um, hopefully it arrive November 3rd and when it arrive, I might want to paint that one the bluish green color okay we're using your typical black 70 90, 950 black there it is you know the word 70950 black regular nothing special okay now to really get around the edges of the face it can be really tricky but once you get that thin black line around it the wrist is much easier so the goal is to thin your paint make it very 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 watery I can't emphasize it enough. And I wanna show some example with people on um, why we want the paint to be very, very watery. Cause I noticed a lot of people ask me why I was painting and then my paint always come very chunky, very thick. Well, that's why we thin the paint, right? Okay, let's see the consistency right now. Is it watery enough? Nope, you see that? We want to we want it to be maybe a little bit thinner than that, okay? Not a drop. That was what three four drop already. Mix mix mix. Let's see where we at. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I think it's getting close. Maybe one more drop. It doesn't hurt. Okay, very very watery oh yeah see it's running okay so why do we want that for example we have a symbiotic symbiotic uh, symbiotic spider-man right here a black spider-man okay so with a very very watery black paint this is what happened I'm not even wearing my magnified glasses right now okay because the sculptor he made she made the ice pop out a little bit so it kind of shows a bit of um, edges. 
So when you have a very, very watery pen, you see, I'm not even wearing magnifying glasses right now because it has a thin wall. You see that? The watery paint kind of just run around it. Everyone is so hyped up about this whole Spider-Man game, right? Yeah. It's pretty cool. You see the water, the paint's very watery. It kind of just run it around the edges. And this is the reason why we thin the paint. Okay? So when you want to do very, very fine edges, either skin tone, it could be Daredevil Red, a Batman Black, or I don't know what, Ninja Turtle Mask Blue, Red, Orange, Purple, and Pink, I don't know. You know, just thin the paint down and be, be very, very patient. And that was first layer, right? Let's see what happens if we put second layer on it, okay? Thin your paint. Okay, always thin your paint. You want to do the edges of the mask. Thin your paint. Black Batman is like the easiest thing to paint. Ash can swear to say that he will paint this all day. He can do Batman all day long. Okay, see second layer start to get a little thicker, right? And then once you're satisfied with the thickness well, for both eyes, then you can start using thicker brush and start coloring up all the black area. Okay, because you already got the edges taken care of nice and clean. The rest is easy, just like when you when you were young, you're drawing that color pencil, drawings at the box, you know, you draw the outline around the box first. Once the outline is taken care of, you just start coloring inside, color in, right? Same thing with sculpting too, okay? Uh, a head sculpt too, okay? So this one's a little tricky because the mask actually stick outward, right? And the face, the skin's inside, okay? Well, I'm gonna do I, what I uh, the best I can without wearing magnified glasses which is a bad idea to be completely honest with you. I'll try on my finger first, but because if I screw up, I'm gonna have to redo this all over again. Okay, I highly suggest everyone wear magnified glasses for this. It will make your job so much easier. But just for the video purpose, for everyone to see that. See, you can barely, barely tell. My paint is so watery, so thin. But because the water, the paint is also very, very thin and not solid, thick black. It kind of still run around the edges instead of being too thick and getting onto the skin. Okay, I'll be honest, it's on the skin. It's on the skin. But because the paint is so thin, it's acceptable. Of course, if I wear some uh, magnified glasses, I will be able to do a better job. Right now, the consistency, the consistency of the paint is so thin, it, the black looks almost like Pencil gray. Okay, you can even wipe it off too. That's how thin the paint is. Yes, I'm being very careful and slow because I'm not wearing magnified glasses. But when I do wear magnified glasses, it will be a lot faster. And I highly suggest everyone, when you guys do this, get your magnified glasses ready, charge it up, turn on the lights, as much lights as possible, nice and bright. This is only the first layer. Yes, it will require some patience, some sturdy hand. You see, I'm pushing both my hand together to create a sturdiness, a firm grip.
Okay, got another line done. Very, very light gray, as you can see. All right, be patient, you know, be patient, little by little. Take your time. The worst thing is you make a mistake, you had to start it all over again. Yes, you can use skin tone to do touch up, but why go back and fix it when you can just do it right to begin with? See, it's draw the same exact line three times. See the lines there? It's not bad. It's not perfect, but it's acceptable. And trust me, that line is going to help you so much. You want to have the line instead of not having the line. It will make the pink. Later on, we do the whole black a lot easier. See, I made a mistake, you just wipe it off because the paint is so thin, so watery, okay? So that's the first layer. And you can go ahead and draw the same layer around the, the eyes too if you want, but I decided to work on that later. I want to add another layer of the black line, black outline, again. And trust me, when you wear, wear the magnifying glasses, it will be so much easier. Everything is like so much bigger, so much easier to see. Okay, you notice, I just put that little dot right there and the paint's already thicker than before. Don't forget that little corner. That corner is what makes it Jim Lee design, you know? Jim Lee style. Another thing is um, that I forgot to mention, this time I did not put matte clear on the flash primer this time. I think I, I really think I should, but due to running out of time, I was taking care of my kids earlier and then helping my wife take a quick shower. So I didn't get a chance to go outside and put that one thin layer of clear coat like I should. But I think it's okay. If I have the clear coat on, this black will go on much easier. But at the same time, it might not flow as easy because it has that foggy texture. Okay, I think we have enough. What is that line? Where did that come from? Funny line. It's okay. Okay, you get the idea. Two layer, right? We drew that line two layer. Very similar to like a pencil color almost. Okay. And the rest is easy. We're going to plug the hole with some white poster putty. And then stick our barbecue stick in there. So when we paint the black, we don't have to touch the cowl, okay? Now, let's work on the eyes. I need a little bit more black paint this time because we want the paint to be thicker than earlier. Just by a little bit. Yeah, thinning the paint, that's gonna be the lesson of the day, thinning the paint. Okay, I think the paint is pretty, pretty solid now. Now, this time we're going to draw around the eyes. As you can see, the eyes are white. I'm not gonna get too close to the eyes. I'm just gonna draw a very, very simple circle around it.
something like this, okay? And I'll work on the eyes later with magnified glasses because I want to do it right. The eyes is important. Since we were able to finish the outline on the mask, I believe that we were very lucky. Didn't make too much of a mistake. But the eyes, I cannot afford to make that mistake. Okay? So we draw two circle of eyes and we'll deal with the the detail later on. Okay, so this is taken care of. I'm gonna squeeze some water here to wash my brush. Yeah, I like to use this brush for detail. Um, this is by, what is it? RT Stick, okay, liner. Uh, what is this? Four over zero. Okay, I really like it because it's nice and long, able to grab a lot of paint. This is another one that I use too. I believe this one is three over zero. Same exact brand. Both are really, really good. Uh, I honestly don't know which one's sharper, to be honest. But hey, they both work fine. Okay. Um, there's also something else that I ordered because Ash can recommend me to get this set. Let me show you. It's my new toy. It just came in today and it's pretty cool. Let me grab it. I haven't used it yet and I was going to use it today, but since we're doing a live stream, so I decided to maybe do it on my own time. I ordered these from Amazon. They're really pretty. Hmm. Look at that. Um, yeah, they come in all type of funny sizes. Really, really long, which I don't know if I'm going to use it. But something similar to what I'm using now, I would say probably this one or maybe this one. Okay. I don't even know the size. It doesn't say anything. These are originally designed for people who do makeup. I'm not sure. Is it nail or eyelashes or eyebrow line? I'm not sure. Um, I got all of these for like $9.99. Okay. Um, I don't know how good they are. I haven't used it yet, but as you can see, they're really, really thin. They are probably, let's open it so you guys can see better. Um, I don't know, maybe thinner than what I'm using now, perhaps. Okay. Might be pretty good to draw some Spider-Man web line, right? Hopefully, hopefully. Okay. Well. Put it back and uh, once I use it, after I use it, I'll let you guys know how it works. If you see me using this next time when I do a video, then you know this is some good stuff, okay? These are not not your your average paintbrush from your art supply store. Um, I really think they're, they're made for makeup because when I ordered it, it says something about I forgot what it says. Ash can just send it to me and tell me to order on Amazon. I got it, okay? Um, if anyone who's interested, message me. I'll send you a link or something similar to it. You can either look for nails or makeup brushes or what is it? Eyebrow brushes maybe or uh, eyelashes brushes. I don't know, but just message me. I'll send you guys the link. I there, There's another one, another set that costs $19.99 and I was going to get that set. But my wife said, oh, that's too expensive. You can get the same exact thing, similar looking for $9.99. Order this first. If you like it, then we'll see. If we don't, then we try another one. So I said, okay, she's the finance manager. So she's my you know, financial officer, right? Chief financial officer, CFO, right? So I got to listen to her. Okay, where's my Batman at? Uh, I was just painting it and then it disappeared. That's where, oh, here it is. Back to Batman, okay? So we're gonna get our thicker brush. Maybe this one? Hmm. Maybe not this one. Yeah, maybe I can use this one. Huh. Okay, let's try this one. So mix the black, mix, mix, mix. Hi Tran, how are you doing? Okay, so we got the paint mix. How's the consistency? It's a little bit thick to be honest. How's it now? 
Okay, a little bit better. Okay, so we're going to start from the bottom of the chin. How is it? Okay, yep. I want the first layer to be nice and thin because we're going to be painting a little bit close to the edge of that mask line we just did. And the goal is to cover the whole entire head with this thin layer of paint. And I'm gonna have to be honest with everyone. Um, all the things that I'm offering in the video right now, these are all self-taught information. Uh, I really don't know how to paint properly, but this way works for me. So you guys can try it because I find it very easy and safe to do. I'm pretty sure that uh, maybe there are other ways to do it. Maybe some professional painter painted differently. If you know, if they have better way of painting, well, let me know, you know, but this is how I do it and it works for me. So I find it easy, very, very simple to do and safe. I mean, don't listen to what I offer because I'm only, like I said, I don't do this, I don't do this for a living. I'm just painting my own shit, man. <laughs> Excuse my Chinese. I'm just painting my own stuff, you know, so. If it works for you, it works for you. If you get something out of it, perfect. If not, then hey, try someone else. It's all good. Another reason, I just emphasize it a little bit. Another reason why we thin the paint so much is because often sculpture has detail on it like texture. And when you slap a very, very thick paint over it, you often will lose that texture. And that defeats the whole purpose of sculpture, sculptor putting all this beautiful detail on. And to keep all the detail, you want the paint to be as thin as possible. Does that make sense? I have seen other painter who just slapping paint on, I mean, it works if you're doing a much larger scale. Well, since we're doing 112 scale, much smaller, and you still want to keep all the detail on the sculpt, it will be best to start with thin paint first. Also, the thinner your paint is, the less brush stroke you will see when it's dry. You see what I'm doing here is I have too much water, too much paint on it. It's running everywhere and I want to balance it out. So I'm just going around all the area that has not been touched by the paint. Yeah, the first layer is not going to look pretty. You want to get this water bubble out too. I'm going to put my lights closer to the scope. Maybe I need to get a I need to get a better camera. I'm using my what is this iPhone 12 from what I remember. I haven't updated for a while. My wife's using 14. Cause she broke hers, so she gets an upgrade. Our, our our rule in the household is, it's not broken, why fix it? You know, and hers is broken, so I told her, go ahead and get yourself a new phone. Then perfect excuse. But as for me, I'm still using the twelve. Um, she has one of the newest iPad too, and one time we were doing a a live stream with one of my mentor in the foreign sea exchange uh, business that we do on the side. And our, our iPad was able to follow us around, follow our eyes around, which is really cool. Because I was moving around holding my son and then the iPad was just following, following me. Yep, but my phone doesn't do that. 
so I would always have to remember that I'm on live cam and I have to make sure you guys can see what I'm doing okay so this is our first layer funny looking right <laughs> this is how you're always going to look when you're doing first layer okay now let's do a second layer now be patient we're what 37 in 37 minutes in so far well, we didn't paint straight 37 minutes. I was talking a little bit, introducing things in the beginning. So I would say, what, maybe 30 minutes in, I would say. Okay, this time we're going to have to choose where we want to paint. I want to do, I want to uh, section the faces area. Maybe the face first, the nose first, and the face Eyebrow. Yep, my paint is still very, very watery, as you can see. Still very, very watery. It's on purpose. Got to be patient. We'll work our way to thick paint later. Okay, so we got half of the face darkened. Now let's do the other side. You can flip your head. Always flip your head to where you feel comfortable. That's very important. Don't be stubborn and just stick with one pose. Because what if you're right-handed or left-handed and then one side, the way you have your scalp facing you or holding, it's not the most comfortable position to paint that side. Then flip it. Flip it around. Oh, one more thing. Um, do you remember to take break in between when you're painting, okay? Don't sit there and paint too long because it will eventually hurt your back. Depends how you sit. You don't want that. Because what if next day you had to go to work, you know, and you're in pain just because you were painting overnight. For my wife and I, we design a lifestyle where we can work at home. So we do trading at home. And then when I have time, I make customs on the side for fun. And I really enjoy what I do. We were in the marketing business for close to 20 years, since I was 22. And that allow us to have the financial freedom, time freedom to do what we do today make toys it's funny how my mentor asked me uh, one day that was way from the beginning when I was uh, men, uh, he, when he was mentoring me he asked me what do you want to do what's your what, what's your life goal and I told him I want to he told me to write it down and he's told me just write everything you want in life down and um, it was funny I think I was 22 at the time I wrote I want to be a toy master I don't even know what that means I said I want to be a toy master I just want to play with toys or modify toys and I think this was maybe a little bit around 10 years ago I want to call myself a master but you know it become part of my life just playing with toys modify toys every single day okay so this is the second layer on the neck area okay gonna mix the paint again make it a little bit thicker and even and we're gonna start painting the rest of the head uh, don't mind me I'm just talking on my ass right now uh, I'm painting and no one's talking to me so just kind of sharing what's whatever comes to my head, my thoughts. 
Hope you guys don't mind. If you guys do next time, I'll shut up. Hopefully you guys can see all the details on the head too. The eyebrow wrinkle. Balance and balance these paint out of it. Out of, out of those dents. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you talk like this too, <laughs> Chan? Awesome. Glad I'm not the only weirdo. You know, you guys need to, let, we need to find out like, how can we do this in a group instead of just me doing a live stream by myself? Is there a way that we can, you know, do stream together? That would be totally awesome because we can share ideas and thoughts, you know. I know it's possible, right? I just don't know how, I just don't know what to use. If we can, you know, I think that that will be so much more fun than just painting by myself. You see, because we did all the edges already, now I'm just painting freely but still in section. Does that make sense? Well, when I get close to the edges, I'm, I'm still trying to be as careful as possible. But a little bit more free as you can see. Pushing all the water bubble out. But you can tell that the paint's getting thicker and darker, right? Yeah, if you guys can see, uh, Tran Tuan, T R A N Tran, T U A N Tuan, you gotta check out his work. The guy's amazing. He have done some amazing Spider-Man sculpture. I uh, one of one of it is uh, Andrew Garfield, and the one I did recently, the the Spider Punk, Hobie Brown. That one was done by him too. He he sculpted it. It's amazing. Yeah, I had I had a lot of fun doing that one. At first, I thought it's gonna be really challenging because all the anime line and all, but after I painted, I ended up painting three of them. I love it. It was a lot of fun. It really, it really is something very different than what I usually do. Just scan, paint. Yeah, I was able to put a lot of uh, detail on the head. That was fun, yeah. And he had that Andrew Garfield head for SH figure art. Yeah, that figure doesn't come with any, any his, uh, unmasked head sculpt. And because he made that mask head sculpt, it complete my figure by so much further because Toby came with um, unmasked head sculpt, but not Andrew. And Andrew is my favorite, favorite Peter Parker. He's good looking. He has a charm. And he has Gwen Stacy, which I love the most. Yeah, and Trenton made my day, you know. Check out his work. You can find him on my friend list on my Facebook. Yeah, he does amazing work. I think he also, oh, he also did uh, um, Miguel O'Hara. Yeah, with three or four different expressions. I think three or four, I forgot. And the, and the, the most iconic uh, vampire bite, that scene. Yeah, he did that hit too. And I love it. That thing is a must have for Marvel Legends. Well, hopefully that the SH figure out one uh, re uh, released soon. I ordered, I ordered that too. Definitely gonna put the vampire head on it. That one's exciting. I know that Chang Tong will make a size for it. You 
notice I'm still trying to avoid getting too close to the edges. I'll go back and do it later on, but at least I'm getting all the main area taken care of. You notice the paint has gone a lot darker now, and this is what my third layer or fourth layer, I lost count. Don't count. Just paint until you feel you're satisfied. You feel like the color is great, you're happy with it. There's no perfect number. Whatever works for you. But see, now I'm doing the same consistency of black paint. But you notice that it's covering a lot more and deeper and better than ever. So what I just did today in the last, what, 30 minutes or so versus how most people or you guys paint and when you're not, when you're not satisfied with the results, what is the main difference? You got to really ask yourself, is it because I, you didn't thin the paint? Or is your paint too thick? Or you try to rush through painting the whole thing too fast? Or is it you didn't because you didn't add that thin black outline to begin with? You know, all these variation makes a difference. And I want to point out something real quick. Let's wait until the paint dry a little bit more. Okay, mix, 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 mix. And squeeze out all the excess paint. And I don't really don't know the difference between sharp, uh, sharp brushes or flat head brushes. But if you guys know what the purpose between each one, let me know. I would like to know how does it benefit you when you're painting. Is the flat better? Or does it matter? Or which one is made for what? You know, I honestly didn't go to school for any of this, nor have I seen any video on, online that talk about this. I really wish I know. I should ask Ashken because he learned painting for the, when he was in school. I don't even think he's on. He's watching me anymore. He's like, you guys are you're doing baby stuff, boring, wasting time. Okay, I'm just covering up another layer and slowly brushing all the bubbles away. And I want to show you guys something after this. No, I have to admit that I'm not a brush paint fan in the beginning. I always believe in airbrushing because I always see people who uh, hand brush that shows a lot of brush stroke and I, I hated it. You know, I feel like you got to You have to airbrush and I used to paint head sculpt airbrush only. I'll probably only do the eyes and mouth with with hand brush, but everything else, airbrush. I will be mask taping here, masking taping there, everywhere, all day long, peel those masks, and then sometimes the paint comes off too, and how do we do it all over again, over and over? I was going through so much headache. And, and that's when I hate painting, because I feel like, um, when I take that, tape off, that masking tape off, I hope it, the paint doesn't come off again, you know, ruin the whole thing. I'll be painting, yeah, masking for like six hours and the next thing you know, it's all ruined because a little bit of paint went inside the mask, the masking tape. And then ruined the whole thing, got a little bit of mask color onto the skin and so on. Oh, it was a nightmare. And I get scared, I just thought, forget it. I'm just gonna commission other people to paint. I couldn't do this. This is just not my thing. I don't have the patience for it, nor do I have the time. And I even know I don't even know what I'm doing, if it's right or wrong. And then this year, um, well, actually, this is a funny story. Um, it was actually, I would say six, seven years ago, my lungs was full of, probably full of lead. 
due to using too much Mr. Color um, lacquer paint for many years straight. I've been inhaling them too much. And um, I guess I got poison. Like when you breathe, you, I'll just say from normal breathing to full breathing, probably I'll just say that's 100%. I can probably only breathe 20%. And always tired, lack of oxygen in my body. Um, I get, I get stressed out easily. And my, I don't have patience. And my temper is horrible. I get mad all the time because I couldn't breathe. I'll be, you know, starting fights with my wife. And thing was just not looking good. So the past two years, I have decided. You know what? I'm going to try to use more um, health friendly paint, Vallejo, the water base or acrylic, and try to stay away as far as possible from lacquer paint. And that was my goal. And that's why I decided to do more of a hand brushing. And when I realized when you thin the paints, your hand brushing result will be just as good as airbrush. And that really got me excited. Okay, and this is what I'm talking about right here. So we just did, I don't, even, I don't even know how many layer of paints already. You notice, hopefully the, the phone camera catches all the detail, but the brush stroke isn't really showing. And you can still see the cow detail, that little leathery texture on it, due to how thin the paint was to cover up everything in black. Because usually you will only see the texture if you airbrush because you can control the, the airbrush is always spray very, very thin. It never come out like thick paint, like plop, you know. But as for hand brush, it's very, very hard to do the layer as thin as airbrush. But as you can see, It's all there, okay? All the, you see that little texture? It's all there. Now what I do next, if you have some um, brush stroke because you're painting too thick, well, try to thin your paint more next time. Um, but if you have a little bit of brush stroke, you can fix it by sealing the paint with clear coat. You can either use, any type of clear will do, it depends what type of, finish you want. For example, let's just say if we're dealing with this figure, it's really matte. The color is really matte because I don't even think they painted. It. It's pretty much just the fat, the material, the original material. It's very, very matte plastic. So what you can do, use mass spray. Any type of mass spray will, will work. But make sure, you, one, you shake the can as long as possible, okay? Because you're, if you don't shake the can, what you're spreading out is very, very uneven. It could be originally matte clear and end up to be clear. Does that make sense? So you gotta make sure you, you know, shake it well. If the bottle tells you to shake for five minutes, you know, do five minutes, do six minutes, you work out your arms, you know, do seven minutes or, or something, or put on the power drill, uh, uh, tool, you know, just start spinning that thing. Okay, whatever works. Okay, because you want the result to be exactly how the bottle describe it. In terms of what brand, um, I still would suggest use brand that come from hobby shop, such as Army Paint. Let me show you guys. For example, there's Army Painter. Uh, this one is perfect matte varnish. Okay. It's an anti-shine matte var var varnish, yep. Or there's always Mr. Color, and I have another one, let me show you this one. I like to buy a different brand and try them out. This one is a transparent matte varnish base. This one is by, of course, the Ammo by Nick Geminis, okay, Titan Hobby. You can try, you can try this one too. Um, I haven't really tried all of them to see 
what the main difference is, but I, I think I will. You know, I think I will because there's always Mr. Hobby, Mr. Hobby, right? Mr. Color, Mr. Super Clear, Semi Gloss, right? I also have Flat Clear. This one is Flat Clear from Mr. Color, Mr. Hobby, Mr. Color is pretty much the same. This one's called Flat Clear. Let me see what else I have. I should have more. Oh, I have some in the garage, but yeah, I don't have it here. I have some in the garage, okay? Um, I might do um, a spoon comparison. I just spray all of them on a spoon, like a, and I paint the spoon, the white spoon black, and I spray all of the, the clear, and I'll show you guys next time, see what the difference is. And so that's what I use to seal the paint. And hopefully we'll pick the best one that's closest to that plastic finish, okay? So later on tonight, I don't want to drag the video too long. Later on tonight, I'm going to use the magnified glasses to go over the ice. And I'll take some picture. But as for right now, the paint is still slightly wet. I'm just going to let it sit slightly longer, a little bit longer. Um, let's go ahead and do the mouth. Okay, the mouth, I like to use this one. It's called, it's a Citadel shade, the flash shade gloss. Okay, I'm gonna shake it well. And this is going to be the last part we do. Okay, use my thin brush, make sure the brush is clean. I will clean it earlier. Okay, you don't want too much paint on the brush. All you gotta do just a little bit, dab a little bit in here. Wipe off the excess, the extra paint off, and grab your your head sculpt and go from one side to other. Okay, be very very careful. You can start from the middle, or semi middle, on one side. See, I'll show you guys the difference very very soon. Hold on, let me finish it up. Yeah, my. The tip of my brush is still somewhat sharp. Okay, so what what's the purpose of this one? Um, oh, let me. Well, I, I drew the inside line between the mouth, between the lips already. I'm just going to color a little bit more on the bottom lip. Let me wipe my brush real quick. Let me grab a little bit more paint. A little bit wetter. Okay. I'm gonna paint the lip. Just the bottom lip. Jimmy like to draw his character with a big fat bottom lip and no upper lip. I didn't even know these type of people existed until I know that until I saw Tom Holland and Doctor Strange. And of course, we got Loki. Yeah, these all very very rare lipless creature. You know, very sexy to some people. I thought they looked pretty good too. Yeah, because I have big, big fat lips. So when I realized they don't have lip. That's why they look so unique. I thought that was interesting. Anyways, so you get the idea. Okay, we got the lip versus no lip. We got Waruna watching too. That guy is he's a master. He's, he's good at sculpting. He's good at painting. That guy make a simple sculpt look like a realistic life, <laughs> life painting. Like a photo almost. That guy's crazy. And I have seen him paint from years ago. He have improved so much in such a short period of time. I don't even know what type of magic tip and tricks he used. If you want to learn how to paint really, really realistic, he is the guy to ask. That guy is something else. Hi, hi. Hi, Waruna. Yeah, he should see some of his new uh, recent work that Indiana Jones is doing. I was zooming in. The amount of detail that he put on that digital sculpt is crazy. To the point that I started asking myself that with all that detail you put it on, can any printer even 
be able to handle your detail, you're going <laughs> way, way too far. Well, I hope, I can't wait. I can't wait. Okay, so here's the, di the difference between with lip shade and without lip shade, okay? And with that little difference, you can kind of see, it kind of make the lip pop a little bit more. I work on the eyes la later on and I'll seal the paint, okay? But let's put on the figure just to see what it looks like. Oh, my mom's on it now. Um, let's see. I have this. Hope it's not too much putty I put inside. Okay, see? I could. All right. Uh, I would like it to sit a little bit lower, but just want to give you guys an idea what it looked like on the figure and what we have done today. Okay. And notice one thing, um, I have not put any of the 5 o'clock shadow on it and the face powder on it. I will do that later on, but the goal is to show everyone how to paint around the mask. Okay, and then that's pretty much it for today. I'm going to um, do the wrist on my own with magnified glasses to finish it off. But as you can tell, the black is very the original black is very similar to the matte black cape that I come with. So just put a matte clear coat on it. It should do pretty well. And also, since I didn't put the matte clear on the skin, I'm gonna do that along with the mask. And I will do the makeup powder on. Okay. For anyone who's interested in this head, it's currently available for pre-order. I will be making ten of them. I'm painted and I'll be painting 10 of them painted by me okay and for anyone who's interested in getting it um, just go ahead and message me and you will be able to get on the limited 10 waiting list also I think this figure is very very new it should be shipping out from Amazon for me it should be out on November 3rd for anyone who want to get them I think you should be able to find them on um, McFarlane website I think they have a currently they're having a deal I think it's him with a Harley Quinn looking like Batman the black and red version Batman also another um, robotic Batman looking and also the bat I think it's a bat flag the Ben Affleck Batman from Flash movie his bike I think I could be wrong but I think that's the bike that they're offering so you get four is it three figure? I think three figure plus that bike for only fifty dollars. So it's it's a pretty good deal. Just that, just this Batman alone with the bike, you're you're making your money worth it, and you get another two characters, you know, extra. So that's what they're offering for. I think it's the November uh, appreciation deal that they have right now. Take a look, okay? And hopefully tomorrow, I will be showing everyone. I'll be painting one of these. Or maybe all of them on my own time. Okay. The classic Batman. I think those are pretty cool too. And uh, that will be Thursday. And hopefully this weekend. I'll be working on my friend's. Um, my friend's storm. I want to show you guys this. This storm. Um, I think her, her name is Natalia. And uh, she sculpted this storm. It's, it's a very very beautiful storm. I want to use it on my. Marvel Legend, and this is the hair that it come with. It's a lot of hair, tons of hair. Yeah, I was a, a bit scared of this hair. Yep. So for anyone who's interested interested in this hair, you can either message her for it. You can find, if you don't you want if you like it, just message me about it, and um, I'll give you the detail. But I will be painting one of this for her. Okay, she, it's gorgeous, gorgeous. Okay. Um, other than that. That's pretty much it. The classic Batman also printing 10 of each for different sizes. So just let me know what you want, what you want them for. Okay. And that's pretty much it for today. If you guys want to know more, just go ahead and message me. I'll see you guys later. Good night. Oh, by the way, Wanora asked any masking putty I use. Um, I don't. For this Batman, for... All the 112 scale I'm painting, no masking tape. I want to keep it as simple as possible. No airbrush whatsoever. Just straight up spray can and um, hand brushing. That's it. Okay? If you want to know more, just message me and we can talk. 
I'll see you guys later. Good night. Bye.